the mighty Appalachian, among the oldest, if not the oldest, mountains in the world. And these mountains is full of water, from their lakeways, the rivers, their streams, the caves, water everywhere in these mountains. But nowadays, it's just easy just to go to the sink in the kitchen and get as much water as you want. Clean, fresh water. And after a hard, hard, hot day of work to relax in a good hot tub. But you ever think about back in the old days, how they used to get their water, how they found it, and the ways they got it up to the house? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna look at it in this video of some of the ways that they've got their water. Water, the essential part of life. Without it, man wouldn't last very long or any living thing as far as that goes. But they've been trying to get close to this water as possible since the beginning of time. Now these old people come into these old Appalachian mountains back when they settled this country, they just didn't come into open fields like they did in the prairie lands out west. This was wilderness. They had to hack their way in here and hack their way into making a, a place for a home or start a little farm, start a garden. That's just the way it was. This is a rough country. And they tried their best to get close to water source as possible. They'd build little homes like this as close to these water sources as possible if they could. Homes look like this. They got a roof over their head, some way to cook, prepare food, heat yourself in the winter, but they had no way to put water in the house except for places like this. So they tried their best to build close to water sources so they didn't have to pack it so much. Now, as time went on, the land got claimed up so much that people couldn't get close to the water sources. So, on these farms and stuff like that, so they had to come up with other ways to get water. And we'll look at it, some of them here. They could get, they could use a cistern method, a well method, a pump method, spring method, out of a cave, out of the creeks, rivers, whatever they could. But wherever the land was is what they had to deal with. That's just the way it was back in them days. First thing we'll look at is the spring. How they got their water. They tried to they tried to build as best they could close to these springs, but they couldn't build right on these creeks and rivers because it would flood sometimes. So they tried to get a few hundred feet away from them, but they would have to pack that water up to the house and it could be a chore sometimes. I know I've had to pack some for my, my grandparents. And every place had an old spring house, if they was lucky they had a spring on the property, they looked about like this. Old spring house. Just a protected place where the water comes out of the ground where they can get it. And they had things like this too. Just little cauldrons here that the spring would come into and fill up and run out, easy to just dip water out of. And a lot of places use pipes too, stuck in a, in a spring to get it out away from the rock where you could just get to it. This is an old spring, it's still being used today on 25E in East Tennessee on Clinch Mountain being used as far as I can and hits the best tasting water too. It wasn't nothing back in them days. I know of a lot of old places got pipes coming out of springs on these mountains. Back when I was a small boy, used to pack this water. And this is an old cave where the spring comes out of hit. They got a pipe on hit. This is over old Chuck Swan in East Tennessee. It runs 24-7 best tasting water and this is about like it was around the house you brought up you kept some for drinking you kept some for cooking washing such a thing 
And it wasn't nothing when I was a small boy. You was out hunting with your dad or out in these woods, and there was a spring. You get down and get your drink of water. But you can't do that nowadays. It's according to where you're at because there's so much pollution in the ground anymore, and that's a shame. And I never thought growing up that would they ever sell bottled water. That was a free commodity to everyone. Water was water. I never thought you'd have to buy it in a bottle. Well, that's the, that's the uh, looking at the springs. Here's another method, cistern. And what a cistern is, it's just a vessel or a container in the ground where they collect water off a of runoff of rain. Now here's an old place here where they's logging. I found this place hunting years ago. The house or cabin's gone but the old cistern's still there. I thought it was a well, but I looked down in it, it's just a cistern, about 20 foot deep. That's an old one, made out of rock. Time's gone by. How much water's been dipped out of that cistern? Probably the cabin run into it, off the roof or something. That's what I figured. Now you could still make your cistern today. They're not in the ground. I've got one on the back of my house where I just collect rainwater to water the garden or the plants or the flowers or whatever. And you could drink this in an emergency, but you, you would have to boil it or use chemicals to purify it because you just don't drink rainwater anymore. So that's the system. Now another method we'll get into is wells. A lot of places didn't have water, so they had to dig a well. And how they found the water is the big thing. Here's a thousand. Well, Donnie, you finally lost it. What in the world are you talking about? This has been going on for hundreds of years. This don't work for everybody, but it works. People find water like this all the time, and they still do today. It don't matter what sex you are, what age you are, if you've got the ability and the gift to do this, you can find anything you're looking for with these dowsing rods. Now, a lot of people use certain kinds of wood, forked wood, but I just use regular old metal coat hangers. They work great for me. I found my water line a couple of times with this. I didn't believe it at first either until I tried it but it works for me. And here you can even buy these things online. I've seen them, you could buy them online. But why be, uh, buy them when you can just make them out of an old wire coat hanger? And here's how they work. Here's mine that I use. Just simple coat hangers. You concentrate your mind on what you're wanting to look for. It's just a middle thing with nature. And when you come up on what you're looking for, you're concentrating on, these will cross, and there it is. But then the hard part, when you find water, is digging that well. It's a hard job, and they usually done it by communities. They would help each other, just like building a house, they would dig a well. But a lot of people done this for a living, too. And here's about what the well looked like. A little drawing. When they got the well dug down to the water, maybe 20 feet, maybe 40 foot, maybe more. But what they do, they brick it to keep it from collapsing the dirt over time or keep the water from being so muddy. They put drain holes in it every so often so the water would seep in. It might look like this when they rocked it. It may look like this, the walls of that well. And like I said, people done this for a living. This was a big living back in them days. And it may look like this down through looking from the top down. Or looking from the inside out, look like this. But that's how Wells was. And there was this was a big, big, big thing making a living back in them days. Here's some old pictures of back in the days when people had whales. May look like this outside. May look like this according to who made the well and how they wanted it. 
Could like to make it look like this, like the ancient times. Well, they just bucket it out. And if you're really lucky, you've got a well right next to the house. You don't have to pack it a few hundred feet or more in bad weather. So the next thing we're going to look up on is the pumps. Now, there's all kinds of different pumps. Well, back in them days, they'd hand drill these down till they hit water and they'd put a pump on it. And, you know, that pump would create a suction and bring the water up. And every little community, like these mining camps, would have a, a hand pump where everybody get the water and pack it back to the house. And a lot of little farms had their own personal places like this. This was a big thing, but nowadays, what do they do? They just come in here and they drill it down to the hit water and they set you up completely. Now this ain't cheap. I've never had this done, but a lot of my friends have and it's very, very expensive. I'm telling you. Now here's basically what an electrical pump looks like, a submersible. Once you find they drill the hole, put the pump down in the casing, down in there to hit the water and this is it. Pressure switch kicks it off and on. Got a pressure tank. This is basically the layout of an electrical submersible pump out in the rural areas. This is being used all the time. Now another thing, you don't see much of these around the Appalachians, but they are here in certain places. This is mostly out west. The old windmill. And these old windmills pumped a lot of water, especially just constant water, especially if you got a lot of cattle and stuff. And here's a basically the layout of what they look like and how they work. They, the wind would turn the, the blade and the blades would transfer through this gearbox and make a, a mechanism go up and down like your hand pumping. And it would constantly pump when the wind blowed into that storage tank. Of course, you got a break on it where you could shut it down to work on it or didn't want it to run, but that's basically what that is. Now these little old communities, especially these old mining communities, this is how they got their water. Old hand pump, everybody used it. And it, but they had steel pack it back to the house. It's according to how close you was to the pump. You may carry it a hundred yards back to the house or more. And when it was wash day, oh man, I'd say they done a lot of water packing. You can only carry so much water at one time. Here when you're washing or they cook it or heat it on the stove to clean your clothes. Or... But this was the wash tub of the day. This is what you took a bathtub in. This is your bathtub. Had a hard day's work in the mines or whatever. You come home, this was your bathtub. Of course, this is a small one. This is not a big one you could get in, but when I was kids, I remember getting in them. Even the old school houses. They didn't have no indoor plumbing or nothing like that. Kids took turns packing water up to the school every day so they'd have something to drink during class. That's days way gone by. And it didn't have no indoor plumbing. This was your bathroom. An old outhouse out back. For many a house growing up. I've had to use these when I was a young man too. Nowadays it's just so simple. Hot tub waiting on you. All you gotta do is turn it on. Modern conveniences. But I hope we don't have to go back to that. But you never know. History has got a bad bad thing about repeating itself. Now this old, these old people in these Appalachians, they know how to work this water. Right here's an old a mill, water mill. Of course, that's another video, but they know how to work this water. They made it work for them and didn't need no power either. So there you go, different ways of getting water. So I hope you enjoyed this. There's so much history in these old mountains and across the country. And I'm just trying to share 
of how things used to be and how things have changed so much. So I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.